Vaccines are very important in protecting the public's health, but improper storage and handling can reduce vaccine effectiveness. This can result in poor protection against disease for your patients, and it may mean that patients need to be revaccinated. Patients who must be revaccinated because of a storage and handling error might lose confidence in your practice. The storage unit where you work may contain a vaccine inventory worth thousands of dollars. But the money spent on those vaccines might be wasted if staff members do not follow recommended storage and handling procedures. If you want your patients to be protected by the vaccines you give them and to have trust in the care you provide, then it is your responsibility to store and handle those vaccines with care. We visited Chelsea Tadena, a 2016 CDC immunization champion and medical assistant at the Lanai Community Health Center to see how vaccine storage and handling best practices can be successfully applied. So let's take a look. Lanai is a very small community with roughly about 3,000 people. We are looking at some deers and goats. I think they raised them here. Very tight community, very friendly. We don't have any malls. We only have like small mom and pop shops. We have a elementary school, intermediate school, and high school all in one school. Lanai Community Health Center serves about 1,500 community members. We provide medical, dental, ophthalmology. This is our medicinal garden. A typical day for me as a medical assistant would be seeing about 20 to 30 patients. We are gonna go to our vaccine room, follow me. We are able to help assist the providers and give the vaccines to their patients. Knowing your different immunizations, different needle sizes, what syringes to use. We do have special signs to make sure that our room stays locked and secure at all times and that the temperature in the vaccine room is just right. When the Lanai Community Health Centers scored poorly on its 2013 compliance site visit um, for the BSC program, Ms. Chelsea Tadena decided to take action. In 2013, we had a site visit with the VFC Hawaii, and they came out to Lanai to um, take a look at our um, vaccine storage and handling, and we weren't up to par with that. We had a, a regular sized kitchen refrigerator and freezer, and they were going away with those types of equipment. So we had to look into getting new equipment, and we were able to look at different options from Home Depot. So we were able to find something that would help us. It wasn't too expensive, but reasonable, and that met all of CDC requirements to hold our vaccine. So we got a separate refrigerator and a separate freezer for our vaccines. For a commitment to ensuring VFC compliance and providing the best quality of service to our patients, Ms. Tadena is Hawaii's CDC Childhood Immunization Champion for 2016. It was very difficult getting the refrigerator and freezer to our health center. This is one of our shipments that came in from the barge, and this is what it looks like. We are on a tiny island. The freight comes in only once a week, and you can only leave the island from either a boat or plane, so we don't have big places to go and shop for these kind of equipment. So that was a barrier for us to not be able to be there in person to look at the refrigerator and the freezers. So everything was done online. I communicated with our medical director numerous times to let them know what was, the, what was going on as far as the purchasing goes. The final call for us to do the purchase was from VFC to prove that this was probably the best solution for us to get. 
they also told me that we had to take five days of temperature readings once the new units came in before they could clear us to use those units. So prior to getting those into the office and then having to do those temperatures, we still wasn't sure if we would be able to use these units or not, but they came out okay, the temperatures were on point for them, and we were able to get our vaccines into the new units. Since 2013, we have again upgraded to scientific grade fridge and freezers. We divided the refrigerator from VFC stock to our private stock and we keep it in these organizing boxes of each different vaccine. So the DTAP were all in one area, the Hibs were all in one area, the HPVs were in their own little basket. We put the varicella and the MMR in our freezer, which gave us more space in our refrigerator. Storage and handling is very important. From when it leaves the manufacturer and arrives to your health center, opening the box to make sure that the temperature is still in range, and then by putting it in your refrigerator. If the vaccines aren't properly stored, then it's no good for the patient. You're putting your patients at risk and you might have to give them another vaccination because it was out of the temperature range. And vaccines are very expensive. To keep the vaccines at a good temperature, we also put water bottles on the very back of the refrigerator units to make sure that if we were ever having a power outage that they would still keep cold for our vaccines to hold for a few more hours longer. We prepare our vaccines in our vaccine room. So we have a separate room that has all of the different size needles and syringes needed to give a patient a vaccine. What's cool about this is that the red will show what will be expire, expiring in 30 days. With our vaccine inventory, we have an Excel spreadsheet that has all our vaccines listed and will go into the refrigerators and freezer and we will look at them and make sure that the one that are expiring first is at the front of the line. We double check each and every vaccine to make sure that they're not expiring, um, that they're still all in perfect condition, that nothing has been frozen or the vaccines are not discolored. a thermometer of the room and then our data logger that reads our temperatures and then this is the temperature log sheet that our medical assistants um, chart and document um, the temperatures. This is our first year with the data loggers and we like it a lot because it not only lets us know what the temperatures are in the AM and the PM, but the in-between as well. And all we can do is unplug it from our refrigerator, plug it into the computer, and it'll print out this nice list of all of the different temperature ranges. So it will tell us when our, te our temperatures went out of range and what we need to do to take action for that. This big brown thing right here is our generator. If there was a power outage, this would go off within a minute or so to generate power for our whole health center. Our backup plan includes us taking our vaccines to 
the hospital if our generator broke down and we needed to get our vaccines to a safe spot. We have also posted a sign to make sure that they never turn off the electrical powers. We have annual flu clinics at our health center and also we do outside events for the community so that way we can be a part of the community and reach out to them instead of them coming to us for their flu shots. The medical assistant role is very important with immunizations because we are the doctor or the nurse practitioner's right hand. We hope this example of vaccine storage and handling best practices has been helpful. Remember, failure to store and handle vaccines properly can be costly. Inappropriate storage can mean extra doses for patients, increased costs for providers, and damage to public confidence in vaccines. Take the time now to review your facility's vaccine storage and handling practices. If any of the best practices described here are not standard operating procedure for your facility, please take steps to incorporate them today. For more information, review CDC's Vaccine Storage and Handling Toolkit available on the Storage and Handling webpage.